Well, praise the Lord. We're blessed to be able to gather tonight, and we're going to look at the Word of God concerning hope. And knowing that we serve a sovereign God who rules the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the dry land, and that no one can reverse his decrees, no one can take you from his hand, he gives eternal life and no one can reverse it. Just by that truth alone, we should have hope. But in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18, it says, For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Surely there is a hereafter. In other words, when you arrive, it's not going to be after you pass, you're not going down the street. After you pass, you're going to enter the abode of God. A place made by the architect of heaven, not by the hands of men. Where the streets are gold and the beings there, the heavenly beings are made of light. And the Bible promises that, yes, you have been, uh, you've been saved. And right now we are going through a sanctification process that no man can uh, stop. Only you can stop it. The provision for your greater sanctification is in play. All the provisions from the Holy Spirit in you will work. He is working on us. We should all have a sign on our back that says a work in progress. But the, the, the best news out of these things is uh, we're going to experience a glorification. That means when you pass and the resurrection of the righteous comes, comes that you're going to be changed. And you're going to shed these earthly, uh, earthly vessels and be clothed in a heavenly vessel made of light. And so it's hearing these rock-solid sound truths that should build up your faith and create hope. Are you tracking me? Hope just doesn't drop out of the sky. You can't go to Myers and get it. it it's something that comes up, well, it wells up within you. <clears throat> so Proverbs twenty three eighteen again, For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. If you're in Christ today, you have hope eternal. Because we live and serve and have been blessed to be able to be adopted into the eternal holy kingdom of God with Christ as the King, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So there's your foundation. Hope comes from being regenerated, saved, placed into Christ in the baptism of Christ, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and resting on these precious, precious promises that are yes and amen to the children of God. Yes, yeah, they are yes and amen. They're not kind of maybe sort of, they're yes. Yes, yes, they are yes and amen to the body of Christ. So when you, we, a lot of people get discouraged because they cannot see beyond today. But if you're in Christ, you have every provision to see not only today, but to have hope for tomorrow, if the Lord permits, and to have your heart set on eternity in the presence of God in the eternal heavens. That has no end. Grasp that. All your aches and pains, all your tribulations are going to leave you in a twinkling of an eye. In a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed and live forever in the presence yes. of the Lord. Yes. And and some people say, I don't know what the Lord's thinking about me. Well, let me tell you what he's thinking about you. His thoughts are good towards you. Yes. And Proverbs, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, teaches that very thing, same thing. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a Hope to give you a future and a hope that's unchanging. Hope eternal in Christ does not change because he does not change. He is the unchangeable one. And he and uh, I sometimes I get a little tickled with people 
who really haven't been awestruck by him and they want to negotiate with God. I thought, for heaven's sake, what are you doing? He doesn't negotiate. <laughs> I'll do this if you do that. Oh, please don't go there. That'll get you in big trouble. 29-11. In Acts 24-15, here's another um, truth about having hope in God. It says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a full resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. Now turn your Bibles with me to St. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. This is what that scripture in Acts 24, um, Acts 24, 15 is referring to. Uh, St. John chapter 5, 28, 29. Thank you. Are you there? Amen. Let me let me start at five twenty four. That's one of the most powerful scriptures in all in all the New Testament. And we'll 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 slowly read down into twenty eight and twenty nine. Saint John chapter five, verse twenty four. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me. Say this with me. Has everlasting life okay what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to take you to scripture that should build create and encourage and lift up the measure of hope that you have in your heart in other words people wander the streets and and carry on and do drugs and carry uh, they act like uh, they don't have any sense why do they do that because they don't have hope They don't understand they're about to meet God. And they have no clue when he's coming to them. So they eat, drink, drug, and be merry with that philosophy. That'll take you straight to hell. True. True. So this text points us to the truth of having, not going to get, but having eternal life. St. John 5, 24, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has, present tense, everlasting life, catch it, and it says, and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. If you believe that, the grave shall not have power over you. You will sleep in Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And it says here in verse 25, it says, Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is. When the dead, catch that, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Verse 28, do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice And come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. There it is. Now, turn your hold your hold your thumb right there, and go to uh, Romans chapter eight, verse one.
Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Catch that. But it's with a condition. The promise is with a condition. It, it's right there for you. 8.1. I'm in Romans 8.1. B. Are you there? Yes. It says, I'll read it again. There is no, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in, I in, Christ Jesus, who do, the, the condition, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There it is right there. That's that crossover that St. John 5 and 24 is talking about. If these truths are in you and you believe that you have been placed into Christ, if you believe that you have intentionally put the, the, the weight of your need. See, need has a weight. If you, put a, if you had a scale here and you threw your need up on there, it would have a weight. Well, the greatest need any human ever have or will ever have is their need for soul salvation. The word salvation means rescue. Jesus Christ was sent to offer salvation to those who repent, to those who believe, and to those who commit themselves and know that Jesus is the Christ, that, that God accepted his work and his work only, and that no one can substitute the finished work of Christ, that Christ offered the perfect sacrifice, that Christ delivered exactly what the law required, that God is not willing that any other sacrifice can, should, or nor does is there a need for it. Because what Christ offered, God accepted. And when God accepted it, Jesus says, it is finished. And if you're in him, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, this is what's happened to you. Let me encourage you with your current location. You know how you remember in the garden when, when God asked Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking the GPS coordinates. No, no. He, he was going way deep with Adam. Where are you? In other words, Adam had failed to worship through obedience. He had taken counsel that was knowingly against the counsel of God. And the moment he did that, he lost. He lost his way. He lost his eternal presence with God. And he was driven out from the presence of God. That's what God wanted him to recognize. Where are you, Adam? Where are you? The question is, where are we today? Ephesians chapter 1, ver uh, I'll read 1, 2, and 3. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. Listen closely. Verse 2, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen real close, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. What does it say in Dayton, Ohio? In Colorado? No, it says in the heavenly places, in, I in, Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of, of the glory of his grace, by which he made us, catch it, Accepted in the beloved. 
the beloved family of God, the beloved body of Christ. That's where you are. You are in Christ and blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Give him praise. Come on, church. Do you realize what he just said to you? That you are in his son. His son rules the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and you're on your way to meet him. If that won't give you hope, I nothing will. You're going to see the one you've been praying to face to face. The Bible describes him as having eyes like flames. Like flames. Hair like the sun. Eyes like flames. Hair like the sun. Hallelujah. So, this, this hope that you have has a foundation. It's not a whim. Oh, just let me wake up one morning and grab hope off the shelf. I'll be good for today. Oh, no, my friend. Hope is found in belief of the truth. And when you really believe something, it will change you. If it's not brought change, you don't believe. That's for sure. So here, as we looked in Acts 24, 15, it says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead. Did we see that? Yes, we did. Is there going to be a resurrection of those in Christ Jesus? Yes, there is. And it's called the resurrection of the righteous. And let me tell you that God, through Christ, is going to officiate that moment. No one will be with us. Will You and I, I'll go before him all by myself. You're going to go before him all by yourself. And the Bible says that you shall give an account for every idle word spoken. That you shall give an account. And that you shall be rewarded for what you've done while in the body, whether good or bad. The word of the Lord. So in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, it gives us an example of, and I always, <laughs> I always uh, admire the unbelievable measure of faith that Abraham showed. But turn your Bibles with me to uh, Romans chapter 4, and let's, let's read down together. Romans 4, we'll, we'll look at 18. Amen. It says here, I just have to read it. Uh, let me start here at 1. We'll, we'll, we'll ease down into 4. 18. It says, what, what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified, now that word means declared blameless. If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham, what? Believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, stop right there. As we know, the Bible teaches, listen closely, catch this, that Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. And that Jesus Christ is the end of the law to all who believe, just like Father Abraham. Okay? So it says here, now, uh, it says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Catch that. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. This, where is this well 
of righteousness. Does it not come from the righteous one, the only one who is righteous, Christ our Lord? So the righteousness of Christ our Lord is imputed, or otherwise, simpler, uh, 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 easier way to say it, is transferred to your account. And therefore, you and I stand in Christ because Christ fulfilled the law. Christ is the righteous one. And so the righteousness by faith comes to us. Catch this. you got to get this point. Righteousness comes to us by faith as space a gift. It's called the gift of righteousness. In other words... You didn't work. For, do you work for gifts? No. No. It's a gift. It's right standing with Christ. It's right standing before God that Christ has imputed this. And thus, when you have received the imputed righteousness of God, you have hope because the chains of the sin that was besetting us have been cut off. You no, know, you no longer desire to walk in unrighteousness. The things that you once did at that time in your life are like gravel in your mouth, gravel in your ear, in your ears, and and glory to God if if the Lord has really set you free, the things that please the flesh no longer do. That's that peace that was discussed earlier, the peace of God which transcends. The desires of the flesh. It transcends it. It's, it's, it's an imputed gift. The peace. What did Jesus say when he appeared before those that, that followed him after his resurrection? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. He's known as the Prince of Peace. Now all, all peace begins by being reconciled to God through Christ because Christ Jesus cuts down the wall of hostility meaning you're no longer an enemy of God because Christ has paid your sin debt you've been given the gift of righteousness you've been placed into heavenly realms and given every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus Ephesians 1 3 it's these truths that should if you believe give you hope that allows you to raise your sight line just a little higher, and then a little higher, and then a little higher, just like the Apostle Paul, chained to a dungeon, chained to a dungeon, singing the praises of God. Why? Because he knew the reward that was coming to him was far greater than the suffering that he was experiencing at that moment. Christ is coming. We need to prepare, and we need to be full of hope in order to endure these tribulations. Know that. That's why the Lord is really pressing on us. Listen, hope. Preach hope. Preach hope. Because if you don't have it, when the, when the real trouble comes, you're going to shake in your boots and not be worth... You're going to have trouble. But confidence in Christ will take you through. Hold on to Christ. Pray more than anything else. Because God has said it to us. He wants us to pray. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, and 18. Pray without ceasing. Yes? Is it in there? Yes. Hold on to Christ. That means believe. Hold on means believe. Believe in the one who saved you. Believe in the one who paid your sin debt. Believe he's in that you are in him and he put the Holy Spirit in you. Believe. Those truths will hold you through times of the storm. This, uh, Romans chapter four, verse five, it says, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds, whoo, say it with me. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven 
Boy, that make you want to dance. And, and whose sins are covered? Covered with what? Covered with the precious blood of Christ. When God, let me tell you something. That's why the Lord presses down on us to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. Why? Because the very lifeblood of Christ was shed so that you could have your sins forgiven. How much more then should we be the first to forgive? Matthew 6, 14 and 15. It says in verse 9, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not, shall not impute sin. Thank you, Lord. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. It says, how then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised. Now while now while circumcised circumcised, but but not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had which he had while still uncircumcised that he might be the father of all those who believe. There it is, there it is right there. The father of all those that believe, the father of faith. Though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of uncircumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, the father of circumcision to those who, who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while uncircumcised. Verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise of, of no f- effect. Verse 15, because the law brings about wrath. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Listen real closely over the next four or five verses. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who, what? He believed. God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which are not exist as though they did. Verse 18, key verse. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he became the father of of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that he had that what he capital H had promised he capital H was also able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness amen amen, amen. amen. now verse 23 it says now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for all but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who who was delivered up because of our offenses, my sin, and was raised because of our justification. Oh, saints, it is so rich. I could go on and on, but I will go down to verse 5 because that's going to really solidify this message. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character, what? Hope. Now verse 5, key verse. Now hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. In other words, you've got the surety of Christ on the cross. You've got the surety of the promises of God. You've got the surety of the blessed Holy Spirit being on the inside. You have the surety of you standing before the Lord of all because of what Christ has done. We are on our way to glory. No man knows the day or the hour, but the, the, the marching orders from the Scripture are have hope in Christ. Have your faith in Christ alone and stand. And when you've done all else, stand. And when you can't do anything else, stand. And while you're standing, praise God. Thanks for letting me share.